Hello everyone. I just um, figured out how to do something that I thought was really cool and took me a little bit of figuring out to do. Um, it's not super advanced, but if you're learning and you're past the basics in terms of some basic REST APIs and you're tackling AJAX, this is a post on AJAX. Now, my stack specifically is Node, Express, Mongo, um, and EJS. If you're not familiar with EJS, it's a templating language for Node.js. There's not a lot of stuff. There's not a lot of stuff out there on it. Even though it is an older templating language, I think the last update was in 2009 or 2011 for EJS. But it's it's what I found in a tutorial, and I actually I actually really like it. It's similar to Jade, from my understanding. But <clears throat> I was introduced to EJS, and Jade with no brackets kind of freaks me out. So. I, I really really like EJS. Let me show you what what this little AJAX call does. So what I have is a is a category list here of all these categories. These are all my test categories I've done. So if I add a category here, I'm going to add another category. Man, can't type when you're under pressure. So I'm going to add my category with this button here, and it's going to populate at the bottom, and it's going to empty this out. Bam, look at that, and I'm going to go to the bottom, another category. I'm going to go yet another category. It's emptied, it says yet another category. So cool. I mean, really simple functionality. I did this on purpose because it was simple, and it, I learned a lot from it, but I did go through a lot of, a lot of pain trying to get here, as I'm sure a lot of you have. So on to the code. Um, if you're wondering what web editor this is, I'm using WebStorm. Oops. Using WebStorm. So <clears throat> I have an AJAX call here. This is my actual JavaScript um, for that page. I'm going to walk you through this real quick on the AJAX side of it, and I'll walk you through the Node side of it, and then we'll walk you through some EJS stuff in case you're interested in that. So I'm using a little bit of jQuery. I don't have a lot of jQuery in my application. I'm actually trying to stay away from it. But I've come across a lot of good articles that say um, the jQuery does a few things really well. One of them is AJAX calls. In fact, I came across some people that only use jQuery for AJAX calls because it's a simple syntax. They take a lot of the boilerplate away from you that you have to write, and they take care of some, some back-end compatibility issues too. So let me get my HTML up here. So this is my HTML and this is my JavaScript for my HTML page. Um, so I have a basic section. I have my form. This is the form that we're actually working with here, right here. <clears throat> um, the form has the ID of add category form. And um, if you're not familiar with EJS, this is an EJS tag. I guess I'll go into this a little bit as far as what this does so you're not super confused. EJS allows you to write HTML with embedded JavaScript. That's in fact what EJS stands for, embedded JavaScript. If you notice my file has a .ejs tag, um, Node now knows this is an EJS template and this will render on the server side and then spit it out to the browser side, which is pretty cool. Um, so using this data, I have to use this data attribute because I have a specific user ID that I want this category saved to in Mongo. If you notice down here in my console, Every time I add a category, it's, it shows me my category. So here's another category, yet another category. And then if we go up probably quite a bit, I'm not even sure if we'll get there. Yeah, let me think. Oh, there it is, another category. So we have another category here and yet another category there. And those are saved to a specific user ID. And this is how I get the user ID to the server by using this data attribute. Um, you can use data dash whatever you want. This could be data ID, data user ID, data blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really matter. Data dash something. And we're actually calling that over here. That's what we're calling to make our request. So, <clears throat> um, got a little bit off track there. So starting at the top, we're having a jQuery event based on the ID. That's what this pound sign means is ID. This jQuery selector can be for an ID or a class. It may, it can it you may be able to use it for a name. I'm not sure what 
um, you would call here for a name. You can go probably Google that quite easily. But this is ID add category button on click event. Okay, so I'm using the on click instead of just dot click and calling a function. Uh, I don't have a specific reason why. Some much smarter people could probably tell you one way is better or the other, but this is how I got it to work. Seems to work great. So add category button is the ID, and where's my button? Submit ID add category button. So when this button is clicked, when this button is clicked, add category. And yes, I have my button before my input name. I thought I, I really like the look of that. So <clears throat> when this button is clicked, it's going to prevent the button from performing its default action. So whenever you're performing an AJAX call on a form or a button of some kind, you want to call event.preventDefault and event.stoppropagation with the braces. There is an alternative to this. It's return false. Um, yeah, obviously my web storm is freaking out because I called return false here because anytime you have a return statement, as you know, in JavaScript, it's going to stop it. I think this actually needs to go like down here. Let me see if that doesn't freak it out. There you go. So I think this wants a comma or something. I don't know. Anyway, I use these instead of return false. Um, from what I found, return false automatically puts these in here. So I just went with a straight JavaScript application. So what these do is these stop the page from refreshing upon the button click. If you have any static forms with a RESTful API or any kind of other API, <clears throat> um, when you click a button, it's going to refresh the page. So your form gets cleared and you can enter a new whatever. I, however, do not want that. What I want is for this to automatically propagate in the bottom of this list. Unfortunately, the bottom of my list happens to be way the hell down here. <clears throat> so after that is done and my button does nothing, then I start my AJAX call. Now your AJAX call consists of a URL. Now my URL is my route that I've defined inside my user route, um, which is here, user categories colon ID. Okay. So I have right here the same thing, user categories, user categories, plus that ID that I showed you in my template right here that gets pulled in through my EJS tags. So this gets populated through EJS, put right here, and then I'm picking that data up right here through my add category form, add category form. So when, when I add this, I can access anything inside this form attribute and I'm accessing data which is this and remember I said you can have anything you want on the other side of this dash here um, you add that whatever it is right here so I have user ID um, could have anything you want so <clears throat> sorry I just noticed a typo here um, this has a lowercase i this has an uppercase i but it's working so I'll troubleshoot that later. So we have a type of post. Um, if you're doing this with a GET request, you don't actually have to specify a type since its default type is post. Content type of application JSON. I wanted to use JSON mainly just to do it. I don't really have a specific reason why. It's actually a pretty simple, it's just one, th one string. So I, I probably didn't have to use JSON, but I did. Now, in case you are using JSON, this was one of my big hurdles, was actually getting JSON to work correctly um, between between Node and between between um, my JavaScript here and my AJAX call. So we ended up using JSON.stringify, and then we're going to stringify this object. This object here uh, is the user. Now, what we're doing here, we're actually making our own we're making our own uh, JSON object here. So my JSON object name is user. Now, it, as you know, with an object, you have to have uh, brackets, as it's highlighted brackets, and you give the object a name, and then you give it a value. Now, my, my value is actually another object, hence more curly braces. See more curly braces? So we have an object inside of an object, which kind of creates JSON. 
I have category in quotes because in JSON everything is a string. And then I have my jQuery <coughs> call to input category name, which is right here, input category name, dot val. And dot val will get the value input into this field. So that is working. Um, that is working correctly. If there's another way to do this without this kind of strange building your own JSON, uh, if you could maybe put a comment in the bottom, that would be great. Otherwise, um, I may do some research on that later, but this is good for now. So that is my entire AJAX call. That's what's going to get sent to my server. So when I click the button, it's going to not do anything with the page, and then it's going to go to user categories ID, post type, application JSON with this data. Now, that when that is done, that's going to go to my route. My route here, um, I'll go in this, if you don't know how to do router.route, it's actually pretty simple. I got this straight out of the node docs, and I'm not really a doc reading kind of guy. But if you haven't seen this before, all this does is gives you the ability to um, use everything with user slash categories slash ID or whatever your path is. And then um, you can just show the actual different uh, verbs, as they call them, post, delete, get, without having to retype this and possibly duplicating errors. I actually really like it because it's going to clean my code up a lot. Instead of me having a bunch of routes like I do in some of my other files, and then I just kind of have to guess what's what. Like if I go into my route, my, uh, where's my event route? If I go to my event route, I'm not doing that. I just have router.get, uh, events, then I have router.post, event, then I have router.get, event new, router.get, event ID, router.get, event ID, edit, event edit put, event ID put, event ID delete. So these, I have to look here and I have to look here to see exactly what's what versus where if I just use this, I just look for this route. Okay, then I'll, then I'll see if it's all, post, delete. So it's pretty cool. So <clears throat> this is my middleware section. Anything in dot all is going to run through, is a place, this is basically where your middleware lives, right here. And you call next when it's done. Call next when it's done. Now this is my post request. I have a couple console logs so I know that this route is getting hit. And I have my, my Mongo call user find by ID and update. I have my ID. And then here I get here I get my um, <coughs> um, categories. I'm sorry, excuse me. So here I'm pushing into the array. This is the array here. This is the Mongo array. I'm pushing into the array categories. Uh, categories is the name of the array in Mongo. I'm pushing this item into it. Request.body.user.category. Um, I won't go too far into that. Save, ups are true. Uh, when that's done, I'm going to get this callback function with category as my result. So category is going to be returned from Mongo when I when this uh, find an update is completed. And I have new true, so I get the new value, the new document. I'm sorry, I get the new document instead of the old document. <clears throat> so category. So this is just a debugging thing. A console log category categories that's actually what this is that that's what's making this happen is I'm taking category dot categories and populating that I'm sending a status response of 200 so when this is done um, I don't have to do anything with category actually well scratch that you kind of do have to do something with category because that's what we're doing here so I'm sending a res.status of 200. I'm doing a res.render. Now this has to do um, this has to do with EJS, and we'll go over that. And then I'm just ending it. I don't think I have to end it, but I'm ending it. So this is my actual template I'm using with EJS, um, which is my categories. Let me get there. Where the hell is it? There it is. I moved it. So a very, very tiny snippet of code here. Um, again, because this is this is EJS, this is a template 
that is living in here. And what we're doing, if you're not familiar with, with templating, where am I? Here I am. When I hit res.render, what res.render is going to do is going to say, hey, Node, go out and grab this. Go ahead and grab this file for me. And it's going to go, okay, cool. Here's the file. Oh, and then it's going to go, oh, when you have that file, this is the data that you need to um, send with that file in order to render it properly. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking I'm taking my um, my category my category here. Oh no, I'm sorry. Excuse me. My category here. Taking my category here. Dot categories, which gives me this list again. So I'm taking my category dot categories, and this variable name is what I can use in this template to gain access to these things, if that makes sense. So essentially, what this says is, hey, why don't you go ahead and grab all this data down here and send it to this template under the tag of category. So it'll essentially be, be an, an object, it'll be a, um, a JSON object with the name of category with all of this data behind it. So. When I go into categories, I can call category dot for each. So category dot for each, and now this is an array, simple array, category dot for each, and then so for every element in that array, I'm going to call a function. I'm going to call each element of that function each, and then I'm going to I'm going to print each in this paragraph tag. That's kind of a long explanation. Hope it wasn't too boring. If you're not new to this, um, this should be pretty exciting. If you are, I'm sorry, if you are new to this, this should be, this should be pretty exciting. If you're not new to this, you probably, probably just wasted three minutes of your life, and you'll never get it back. So, calling a JavaScript function, printing out every single item in this array every time. So essentially what it's doing is this. For every, if I have you know 15 things, it's going to print out 15 p tags on top of each other, with which the name of each one of these array, everything in the array, which is exactly what it's doing here. Right. So these are all p tags, and Ethan birthday, James birthday, my birthday, right? Ethan birthday, James birthday, my birthday. So it's just taking it one by one and printing it on the screen. Now this is how this works. This is actually server-side rendering. In this node route, this this render pay this render call from res means grab this template, render it with the data, make it HTML, and send it back to the server. That's exactly what this means. So this is actually what you're sending back to the server. And what I'm sending back is not values. I'm sending back this page filled with HTML. Then, when that's done, it gets sent back over to my browser. And this Ajax function, Ajax function is going to catch it with this dot done. So when this dot done is called, so Ajax goes to my server, goes to my server, goes click, 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 do all this crap, do all this crap. Oh, okay, res dot render. End. When this end is called, it goes back to the Ajax call. And Ajax, we have this thing called done, where when it's done with everything over here, do this function, do this thing. And whatever you get is called a result. Now, I have, um, I'm calling two functions here, both of these functions right here. They're very simple. <clears throat> Change categories which is this function of change categories. So again, um, this is a function. I'm passing result into the function and I'm taking my function and result now becomes categories if you're not familiar with how functions work. So the way functions work is this. You have a function, you have the option to pass it a parameter. This parameter is the result which is all the HTML that's coming back from the server. This whole thing that was rendered, all this HTML is being sent here, being sent into this function, and within the function, I use all that HTML by the name categories. So, 
and I'm using categories here. So what I have is div.innerHTML equals categories. So that innerHTML equals all these p tags is basically what that means. So, I mean, hmm, yeah, I won't do that. So I'm using um, using div here. I don't have to. I don't like here. I'm not using div. I was using a, a variable here to call this, but I'm like, eh, it's just one thing. <clears throat> so I have document inner get element by ID list category section. So my list category section is right here, and actually you see more EGS tags in here. So I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking everything within this div, and it's called a section, but it's the same thing as a div. And I'm stripping out everything in here, and I'm going to replace everything using inner HTML. So replacing the inner HTML, which is this stuff, with categories, which, as you know, is a bunch of p tags like this, just over and over and over and over again. And you end up with this. So when I reload this page, when I reload this page, I'm actually using this this logic to print the categories and then sorry I'm trying to change my screens here and then when I change this you hit, hit the button I'm actually using this this logic and in turn I'm using this logic to populate that list so I'm actually populating that list from two separate locations now Later on, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace this. I'm going to replace. Um, I'm going to replace all of all of this logic, and I'm actually just going to pull in. Um, I'm just going to pull in this template, so I, I only have one source of truth. So, because what I want to do is eventually I want to have my categories with a little minus sign over here that deletes each category, and I want to have a count for each category over here. I don't want to have to do that twice. I'd rather do that once. So I'm going to make this my source of truth and eventually I'm just going to pull in um, I'm going to pull in this template right here using this methodology include blah blah blah. Anyway, that was kind of long-winded. Sorry about that. This whole video is a little long-winded. But I hope I'm giving you valuable information because the way that this works if you don't understand it can be cumbersome and I, I haven't found anyone that literally explains it and breaks it down like I'm breaking it down and this is what makes sense to me as a learning programmer so I hope it makes sense to you and I hope I'm not wasting your valuable time because man there's a lot of resources out there and your time is valuable so anyway so after that stuff has happened after this um, <clears throat> this function runs remove text from input so very simple function what I'm doing here is I'm calling my input here. I'm calling my input um, document .get element by ID input. Now, let's go through this. Um, let's go through how this functions work again. So I'm calling my function up here in my done uh, method for for the AJAX call. Remove text from input, and the input that I want to remove the text from is input category name right here. Input category name. <clears throat> now this is now referred to as input within the, within this function and I'm sorry I'm going over such a basic thing in detail but if you're brand new this could be helpful because passing items through high-level functions can sometimes be a little have their own little learning curve so this is what I want to remove the input remove the text input from and it can be anything, it can be any form, it can be anything. So I'm just going to call it input in my function here. So my variable called remove this document dot get element by ID input. So what this essentially does is this. Right? Get element by ID input category name. Pretend there's parentheses here. <clears throat> and then I'm calling my variable remove this dot value. And I'm giving it an empty string. That's all. That's all I'm doing here. So that's the entirety of this AJAX call. Um, wow, 25 minutes for this. Holy crap! Sorry about that. But I wanted to make sure that you understood what was happening not only with the AJAX call, 
um, but with EJS and within Node because it's all interconnected. And there's so many videos that show you one part of it and don't show you the whole thing. And I wanted to show you everything from start to finish. <clears throat> I really hate that they do all this crap. So what I mean by that is not show you everything start to finish in this way. Now, if you use Jade um, or another templating language, I'm assuming it's going to be very similar. The only thing you would change with your templating language is going to be uh, these pages and how you call these pages the node aspect I'm, I'm sure is still going to be the same it's still going to render um, it's still going to you're still going to use res.render you're still going to call your template I'm pretty sure you're still going to call it in a similar fashion like this if not Jade has another way syntax to do that and I'm sure you're aware of that um, I'm sure something similar is done like this with <clears throat> with react uh, I don't know much about Angular, nor do I want to at this point. Um, but knowing that React is basically just plain JavaScript, you know, on on supercharged. Uh, I'm pretty sure you still make an Ajax call. I'm pretty sure you still make a done call, and I'm pretty sure you're still going to have to pass through your HTML. Um, whether you use um, Express or React Router, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So let me walk you through this again. I know this video is long, and I'm sorry. But hey, man, if if I help a couple people, worth it worth it to me. Screw the rest of you that already know what you're doing. <clears throat> okay. Blah 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 blah. That's why I have ASDF all over the place because I'm a lazy typer. Add category. Ajax call. Ajax. Hit the button. Don't do anything. Do the Ajax call. Send your URL, which is the same as your <clears throat> as your route okay post content type application JSON um, I'm sorry I don't have anything about XML whatever but I just have JSON um, I will say this if you're doing something and you get stuck it probably has something to do with your data type I find that to be very picky this was by far the hardest part is trying to send JSON over Ajax that was by far the hardest part of this. So if you're having a problem and it's buggy and you think it's the back end and you think it's something else, use console logs, verify that you have your data. Okay. Ajax call. Ajax call dumps into my route here. Goes to my route. It's a post route. Goes to post. Does all this stuff. In my case, it updates my category. Updates my category. Everything's cool. So it returns my category. Now I'm rendering my Ajax template of this lovely category function that pulls down all my categories and displays each of them as p tags through a for each loop. When that's when that's done rendering, um, and it also it does that with the help of this data that I pass to it from this callback. So. <clears throat> Renders done, get sent to the server. I'm sorry, get sent to the browser. Um, Ajax call is done. It was successful. It got a return response with a uh, with a 200 series header. I believe that's what done means. I get it all back in this function. As a result, I take my result, I pass it into my function. My function then goes to this element, replaces the inner HTML with the p tags. And then it removes all the input text from the input and replaces it with a string. And that is the entirety of how to do an Ajax call with EJS, Node, and um, probably not even not EJS if you just had a static website without templates. <clears throat> um, it'd be very it'd be very similar. Anyway, that was very long. Now we're running on 30 minutes. Um, I think I got everything. If I miss something, say something in the comments. If everyone already knows this, tell me and I'll take this video down. But I really think you guys are going to at least understand a little more about the flow of Ajax and how it works through Node and how it goes through templates. Um, if you want to know more about EJS, let me know and I'll do, I'll do some more videos on EJS if you're interested in that. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Hope I didn't waste your time. Have a good one. 
Hey guys, I just realized I forgot to go over something in here. The reason why I have this json.stringify and I'm creating this object right here, the reason I'm doing that is because the name of in my input attribute, or I'm sorry, my input tag, the attribute name is user category. Uh, this is done in a certain way so that it's easy to input the information into Mongo. So that's why this is called user. It's because this is called user. And the reason this is called category is because this is called category. And then this is the actual data I want to save. Um, so that's why that's why I have this formatted this way, is because this is actually the same as my model in Mongo, in or Mongoose. I have um, user gets called by my route when I'm saving it. So user is is um, right here. So in the body of my request, I'm calling an an object. So requesting the body object user, which is this user, and then category, which is this category, which is going to give me this value. Now this was called um, I don't know thing. This would have to be called thing, and in turn, my um, this would have to be called thing. So that's the reason why this says user. That's the reason why this says category, is because of the way that it is formatted within Mongo, and because of the way I'm inserting it. So the alternative to to the server side rendering would be for me to actually just send the value of category.categories back to the Ajax and have everything render in the browser. So that's the difference between server-side rendering and browser-side rendering if you've if you've heard those terms before. So basically instead of a res.render I would probably do a res.send and then I would do category.categories like this and this would just send data back to my Ajax call instead of HTML. The reason why the reason why I decided to do the server side rendering was number one just to see if I could do it because if I can that's really cool. Um, but the main reason is is for performance benefits. If you do server side rendering your performance especially on on mobile customers um, devices is going to be much much better. Much much better. Desktops it probably won't make a huge difference but it's going to be could be night and day difference on a mobile device that's that's older that's lower powered so the server is doing all the heavy lifting instead of the browser the browser is just rendering the HTML um, the server did all the heavy lifting here if I if I did pass through um, res.send category.categories I would have to catch it here in the result function we'll go over this in a minute and then I would have to work with the data inside of here in a similar fashion with a for each loop and then I have to print out p tags um, I don't have a video on how to do that but as long as you can, if you can get the data into your browser I think that's the hardest part after that you're just working with JavaScript